Hey guys, welcome to my first art tutorial. Today I'm going to go over 10 tips for drawing in dots. Some of you follow me on Instagram already, so you've seen examples of my dot work, but for those of you who are new, I'm going to use examples of my old art today to show you what to avoid, and um, hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first tip is to use the right materials. I use these Pigma Micron pens. They come in a set of six, and I usually buy them from Amazon. I'll link them down below. When you buy your set, I suggest making a chart like the one I made here. As you can see in this chart, there's a great variety of dot sizes. Um, I'll go over later in this video how to choose your dot size, but for now, just know that Pigma Micron pens are the way to go. Next is paper. Any type of Bristol paper is great for pointillism. I just use this Canson because it's cheap. It has no texture to it, which is great because that allows me to get perfectly round dots for my drawings, so that's what I suggest. Lastly, you'll need a reference photo. This is the reference photo I'll be using in this video, and I'll link that down below in case you want to draw this photo too. Okay, that brings us to tip number two, which is use a pencil outline. The trick for outlines for your pointillism drawing is to not have a lot of shading because it'll throw off your values later. You won't know if an area of your drawing is too dark because of the shading underneath or the dots on top. So what I like to do is just have a very simple pencil outline, no shading, and then I go in later with dots and shade my drawing. Okay, number three, start with the darkest parts of your image first. When you're first starting a drawing, it's hard to gauge your values against the bright white of the paper. So that's why I like to start with the darkest images first. Portrait painters usually paint their entire canvas a color other than white for the same reason. It helps you gauge the values of your drawing. So for this eye drawing, that's why I'm starting with the pupil first. It's solid black, and then I'll work my way up to lighter values later. When I'm filling in the black parts of my drawing, I prefer to not use dots and instead color them in solid black. I used to fill in the black areas with dots. Uh, here's an example of that, but I didn't like the overall look, so I switched things up. Um, you can see here that the dark values just look sort of washed out and they don't have enough contrast with the lighter values. When I switched to using solid black, I started to like my artwork a lot more. It makes the collage look more visually interesting, I think. Your eye sort of jumps around more on this piece as opposed to that last one. But either way, coloring it in solid black or using dots, I suggest starting with the darkest parts of your drawing first. Number four is take your time. This is not just a filler tip to make sure I had 10 for this video. Um, this is actually the most important tip, I think. If you're jumping around, you end up not adding enough dots to certain areas, so your darkest values are not as dark as they should be, or even worse, your dots end up looking more like dashes, like this. I suggest making sure that your pen is straight up and down, um, not like it is in this footage right here. I have my hand at a bit of an angle just so that the camera can actually catch some light and stop autofocusing. So um, I guess this is a do as I say, not as I do, because, <laughs> because I'm at risk here of creating dashes instead of dots. Pointillism takes a lot longer than a pencil sketch or a pen sketch, so just know that going into it, that you're gonna have to take your time, it takes some patience, but you don't wanna sacrifice the overall quality of your artwork just to save some time. Okay, number five, we're halfway there. Choose your dot size carefully. So for this tip, it's all about the style you're going for. I use the smaller pens, the 005, 1, and 2, if I want a highly realistic look. So let's look at an example. Um, this is my Once Upon a Time in Hollywood drawing, and I use the two tiniest pens, the 005 and the 1, to draw Sharon Tate's face. I wanted it to be in high resolution and in contrast with the smaller faces, which I use larger dots for. Your larger pens, the three, five, and eight, are great for getting a more stylized or a cartoon look to your drawings. I use large dots for this CCC piece on purpose because I wanted it to look more like a comic book. When I first started out drawing pointillism, I made the mistake of thinking that I needed to use all six pens for every drawing. But now I typically just use two or three pens and then I set the rest aside. Number six is to create your dots in a zigzag motion. 
You can see me doing that here. The point is to avoid creating lines unintentionally. Unintentional lines really stick out in your drawing. They can ruin a perfectly good portrait by creating wrinkles in the face or changing the bone structure. Uh, this is my Hill House drawing and I can't even look at it without noticing these odd lines that I created in her neck. Um, I ended up not using the zigzag method and I clustered too many dots together and this was the end result. That being said, lines in your drawing can look really, really cool if done so intentionally and in the right spots. So here's an example of when I used harsh lines. Lines of dots can add texture to your drawing, so that's what I did here with this dragon skin. These lines stick out, but for the right reasons. Okay, so now that I'm drawing the eyelashes, it's a perfect time to talk about tip number seven, which is don't draw hair in dots. This tip comes with a little asterisk because obviously this is just my opinion, but when I first started drawing pointillism, I made this rule for myself that I could only draw in dots, no lines, no filling in, and so I'd even draw the hair in dots. And this is one of my earlier pieces where I did that. It looks okay, just a little washed out, and I wish it had more contrast with the background. So then I started drawing hair in lines, and this is what it looked like. Um, which I think is an improvement, although these lines really needed some work, but I was headed in the right direction. So now, unless the hair is really short like Elle's or Furiosa's, I typically draw the hair in lines. This is my her drawing, and it's one of my favorite examples of why I draw hair in lines. I don't think I'd like this drawing nearly as much if I had drawn the hair in dots. It wouldn't have as much contrast, and I think the hair is really what makes this drawing look so striking. So the point of this tip is to say that you don't have to limit yourself to just dots. I'm drawing this eye right now, and the eyelashes stand out better because I'm using lines instead of dots. Okay, number eight is break your drawing down into smaller shapes. And when I say shapes, I don't mean like circle, triangle, square, because Really, whenever you're drawing a portrait, you don't see those exact shapes very often. Um, not even the pupil or iris of the eye is an exact circle most of the time. So what you're really doing is breaking it down into blobs, but um, that is not a good name for a tip, so I use the word shapes. <laughs> if you're drawing realism like I do, then all of the information you need is in your reference image. So that means when I'm drawing a portrait, I'm not thinking, Okay, I'm drawing an eye, and eyes are roughly almond shaped, therefore I need to draw something like this. Because what ends up happening is you draw from memory instead of using the reference image right in front of you, and it doesn't look anything like what you're going for. At least in my case. So whether I'm drawing a person, a horse, a dragon, or this weird car thing, it's all the same. What I do is I break down the image into smaller shapes, and I'll show you that right now. Okay, so here's a portrait of Post Malone that I've been working on, and I want to take a minute to look at the reference image that I'm using for this drawing. So I've brought this image into Photoshop so I can show you, I can trace these shapes, and show you this is kind of the process that goes on in my head. I try to break the image down into smaller blobs like this, and then later I go into my drawing and I try to replicate those shapes as close as possible. This technique keeps you from drawing what you think you should be seeing, such as an eye or an ear, and instead it helps you focus on the reference image that's right in front of you. So right now, comparing the reference image with my portrait of Post Malone, I'm sure you can point out little areas where I didn't get the shapes exactly right. But that's part of the process, and it's not a photograph, it's a drawing, so it's not going to be exact. But this is the technique I use to make it as close to the reference image as possible. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to compare these two because I wasn't able to scan my painting. Um, I had to take a photo, and so the photo is at a slightly different angle, but um, you get the idea. This portrait is a work in progress, and to see what I need to improve, I'll need to introduce tip number nine, which is compare values. So right off the bat, I can tell that this little area in the forehead is not nearly dark enough in my drawing, as well as the side of his face, his cheeks, um, under his chin, this little area, all of that needs to be darker in order to look more like the reference image. 
My issue has been not wanting to return to my drawing to add more dots. I guess, I, you know, I, I think I've added all of these dots, I've worked on this drawing for hours and hours, can it just be finished? But no, it can't. <laughs> the values should be as dark as they are in the reference photo if what you're going for is photorealism or realism. So just take it one step at a time. I know it's hard, but your artwork will be better for it. And that actually leads us perfectly into my last tip, which is set small goals for yourself. I create large 18 by 24 inch movie posters and it can be really intimidating starting off one of those large drawings. You know, it's exciting at first and then it becomes more and more daunting once you get about a quarter of the way in and you see how much work you still have to do, how you're probably not going to sell that many prints. So what I do is I set small goals for myself, meaning uh, let's take this Blade Runner 2049 piece as an example. My goal for one of the first days I worked on this drawing was to finish Joy's hologram face. Then the next day I wanted to finish one of these floating bodies and so on and so on. If I were to just approach a drawing as one large goal and I don't break it up into smaller pieces, um, I would definitely lose my mind. I am not that patient, and I know that sounds funny coming from a pointillism artist, but um, this is a trick that I use to help me not lose my patience and actually see a large drawing through to the end. Throughout this video, I've been cutting back to this little eye drawing, and here is how it turned out. So that's it guys, I hope these 10 tips really help you. Um, be sure to follow me on Instagram, that's where I post all of my art. And I also stream on Twitch, so all those links will be down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Also guys, I have prints and originals available in my shop, emetaryart.com. Um, you can also book commissions and send me a message through that website. Okay, thanks for watching guys.